The Tao Te Ching Chapter 22 In the ancient text the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu we can see that each verse is an aspect and expression of a variety of concepts of non-dual philosophy. In this video series we will look at each chapter of the Tao Te Ching sequentially. If you've enjoyed the series so far don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Let's listen to this verse of the poem, as beautifully translated by Stephen Mitchell, and then investigate its deeper meaning. The poem reads. If you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. If you want to become straight, let yourself be crooked. If you want to become full, let yourself be empty. If you want to be reborn, let yourself die. If you want to be given everything, give everything up. The Master, by residing in the Tao, sets an example for all beings. Because he doesn't display himself, people can see his light. Because he has nothing to prove, people can trust his words. Because he doesn't know who he is, people recognize themselves in him. Because he has no goal in mind, everything he does succeeds. When the ancient masters said, if you want to be given everything, give everything up. They weren't using empty phrases. Only in being lived by the Tao can you be truly yourself. Let's break down each idea presented in the verse. Becoming whole by being partial. The idea here is paradoxical. To become whole, we must embrace our partial or incomplete nature. This suggests that acknowledging and accepting our imperfections, and incompleteness, is a path to achieving a sense of wholeness. The idea that becoming whole involves embracing partiality, aligns with the non-dual concept that divisions are illusory, and unity is found in recognizing the relatedness of all things. Becoming straight by being crooked. Similar to the first idea, this line suggests that to become straight or aligned, we should allow for some flexibility or crookedness. It implies that rigid adherence to a particular path may not be the best way. There's wisdom in being adaptable and open to different perspectives. Non-dualism challenges rigid categorizations, and encourages an understanding that opposites are interdependent. The notion of becoming straight through crookedness, echoes the non-dual idea that all dualities are ultimately part of the same undivided reality. Becoming full by being empty. To become full, we should embrace emptiness. This could mean letting go of attachments, desires, or excess baggage, to create space for fulfillment and abundance. It's a notion of finding richness in simplicity. The non-dual perspective often emphasizes the emptiness or formlessness underlying all phenomena. The idea of becoming full through emptiness, resonates with the non-dual understanding, that true fulfillment arises when we transcend the limitations of form, and embrace the formless essence. Being reborn by allowing oneself to die. Transformation and renewal come from letting go of the old or stagnant aspects of ourselves. Just as a caterpillar must die to become a butterfly, a person must be willing to shed outdated ways of thinking or being to experience rebirth and growth. Non-dualism often speaks to the transcendence of the ego and the self. The idea of being reborn by allowing ourselves to die, corresponds to the non-dual notion, that true transformation comes when the illusory sense of a separate self is relinquished. Receiving everything by giving everything up. This idea suggests that true abundance comes from a willingness to let go of possessions, attachments, and the need for control. By giving up everything, we open ourselves to receiving everything in a more profound and spiritual sense. Non-dual philosophy emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things, and the idea of receiving everything by giving everything up, aligns with the principle that true abundance arises, when the ego's attachments and desires are surrendered, allowing a deeper connection to the whole. Non-dual philosophy, underscores the communion of all things. The idea of receiving everything by giving everything up, aligns with the principle of true abundance, when the ego's attachments and desires are surrendered. 
This surrender enables a deeper connection to the whole. The Master's Example The passage then describes the behavior of a wise or enlightened individual, the Master, who aligns with the Tao, the Way. This person serves as an example for others by embodying certain qualities. Not displaying oneself, the Master doesn't seek attention or validation. Having nothing to prove, the master acts without needing external validation or recognition. Not knowing who he is, the master is humble and doesn't cling to a fixed identity. No goal in mind, the master doesn't pursue personal agendas, yet everything falls into place effortlessly. The qualities of the master, such as not displaying oneself, having nothing to prove, not knowing who he is, and having no goal in mind. Reflect the non-dual understanding of a selfless, ego-transcendent approach to life. The master embodies the idea that true wisdom arises from a state of non-duality, where the boundaries between self and other are dissolved. The Wisdom of the Ancient Masters The verse concludes by emphasizing that the guidance given by the ancient masters, such as if you want to be given everything, give everything up, is not mere rhetoric. It conveys the idea that only by aligning ourselves with the Tao can true selfhood be realized. The emphasis on the guidance of the ancient masters, who used words simply to point to the truth, aligns with the non-dual idea that true wisdom is beyond conceptual understanding, and can only be realized through direct experience and a transcendent perspective. In summary, the verse encourages a mindset of paradoxical thinking and a harmonious alignment with the Tao. Emphasizing humility, flexibility, and the letting go of ego and attachments, as keys to genuine fulfillment and success. The Takeaway Message If you take one message from this verse, it is this. Embrace paradox, be humble and don't cling to a fixed identity or fixed goals. The verse encourages a mindset that may seem contradictory in conventional terms, but is profoundly harmonious from a deeper perspective. Acknowledge that embracing partiality leads to wholeness. Understand that flexibility and openness, even in the face of crookedness, can lead to a straighter path. Recognize that emptiness can lead to fullness. Accept that a willingness to let go and die to certain aspects of ourselves is the path to rebirth. Realize that giving up everything can result in receiving everything. Embody the qualities of the master, humility, lack of self-display, absence of the need to prove yourself, not clinging to a fixed identity, and having no fixed goals. In essence, the verse advocates for a way of being that transcends dualistic thinking, egoic attachments, and rigid perspectives. It suggests that by aligning ourselves with the natural order, and embracing paradox, we can find true fulfillment and success in life. Thanks for watching.